Stepping onto Büyükada, it's easy to forget that you're still in a suburb of Istanbul. The Prince's Islands have long been a favorite getaway thanks to their lush pine forests, sea views, good value hotels and excellent seafood restaurants. But for thousands of years before that, they were a convenient place to exile troublemakers or to take refuge from invading armies, which means they have witnessed more than their fair share of history. The biggest and most visited island in the archipelago is Büyükada, or Big Island in Turkish, home to Byzantine monasteries, Jewish diasporans, Leon Trotsky, and a haunted orphanage, which happens to be one of the biggest wooden buildings in the world. Even the ferry ride past the other prince's islands is a delight, which makes Büyükada the ultimate Istanbul day trip. To the Byzantines, these uninhabited islands were the perfect place to found monasteries. Prinkipo, the Greek name for Büyükada, saw the first of these when Emperor Justinian II built a convent here in 569 AD. The nuns were soon joined by exiled princesses, most notably Irene of Athens and Zoe Porfigurentia, both of whom would return to the city to take the Byzantine throne, becoming the most powerful women in classical history. The island was one of the last parts of Constantinople to be conquered by the Ottomans in 1453 and thereafter retained much of its Greek character. In 1492, the unification of Spain resulted in the expulsion of the country's Jewish population, which was welcomed into the Ottoman Empire. Many of them settled on Büyükada, which today remains a center of Istanbul's Ladino community, formerly Spanish Jews who still speak their own dialect of medieval Spanish. 200 years later, Turkish adventurer Evliya Çelebi visited and wrote about Büyükada, making it famous among the Ottoman elite as a refuge from city life. The first ferry services began in 1846. After World War I, the Greek-Turkish population exchange saw most of the Greek population relocate to Greece, while most of the rest left during the riots of 1955. After losing a power struggle with Joseph Stalin, Leon Trotsky was exiled to Turkey and lived on Büyükada between 1929 and 1933. Ironically, he shared the island with several white Russian leaders who had fled Russia after being defeated by Trotsky's forces, so a team of European volunteers moved to Büyükada to serve as his bodyguards. Visitors are welcomed by the island's pretty ferry terminal, which was originally built as a cinema in 1899. In front of it, the clock tower was built in 1923 to commemorate the founding of the Turkish Republic. A short walk away is Çankaya Cadesi, which is studded with lovingly restored 19th century wooden mansions built as summer houses by Istanbul's rich and famous. Turn down Hamlıca Sokak to the fenced-off, crumbling remains of the Yanaros mansion, where Leon Trotsky lived and wrote his autobiography. Turn inland to reach the foot of a hill that you will have to climb to reach Büyükada's main attraction, the Monastery of St. George of the Bells. In the 17th century, a shepherd heard the sound of church bells from underground. He dug down and discovered an ancient icon of St. George that had been buried to save it from being looted during the Fourth Crusade. This miracle inspired the emperor to commission a monastery on the site. The icon is now kept at the Patriarchate in Balat, but a copy is on display in the monastery's beautifully decorated church. Nearby are the remains of the massive Greek Orthodox orphanage, the largest wooden building in Europe and the second largest in the world. It was built as a luxury hotel and casino by the same Belgian company that built the Orient Express train line and owned Pera Palace Hotel in Taksim. After the conservative Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid II came to power in 1876, he cancelled the casino's gambling license, so the building was put up for sale. It was bought by the Greek community and donated to the church to be used as an orphanage. By 1964, the wooden structure became unstable and was abandoned. It has been left to decay ever since, but in 1921, the Turkish government announced plans to restore it. It is said to be haunted and you can kind of see why. On the eastern side of the island is the surprisingly excellent Princess Islands Museum, or Adalar Musesi, which tells a detailed history of the entire archipelago and its people. The island has several small strips of beach, the most popular being Yuruk Ali Plaja and Viranbar Plaja. 
Büyükada is reached by ferries running from several different parts of Istanbul. They run roughly once per hour between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. seven days a week, although times vary depending on the day, season and ferry terminal. The trip will take an hour from Kadıköy or 90 minutes from Beşiktaş or Eminönü. Büyükada's traditional horse-drawn carriages were discontinued in 2020 and replaced by a fleet of electric minibuses. These silently nip all around the island and can be flagged down anywhere, although they are strangely expensive and often full, so just walking between the sites is often the best option. Renting a bike for the day is also a good idea. Try to time your hike to the monastery so that you can have lunch at the excellent Yücetepe restaurant, a local classic with the best views in town. No trip to Büyükada is complete without a fish meal at one of the waterfront restaurants east of the ferry terminal. Many of these are tourist traps with inflated prices, so ignore the touts and head to Milano restaurant, which has great food and helpful staff at half the price of its neighbors. Anyone wanting to stay the night will be spoiled by the range and value of hotels on offer, but we can recommend the beautiful and great value Chenar Konak Hotel, which comes with a relaxing garden, clean rooms and a good breakfast included.